So let's uh, take a look at all of our single variable theorems that use an OR gate. So first, let's just review, right? An OR gate has the following truth table. If we got two inputs, uh, if we got two inputs, we've got the possibility of 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And we'll just say our OR symbol there. So the rule for the OR gate is if uh, any of the inputs are a one, the output is a one. So that means our only case where we have a zero is right here. So we're gonna put a zero there, and a one, a one, and a one. And just to draw that out schematically, right, with an OR gate, looks like this. So this is a OR B, and here's A, and here's B. So this is uh, everything based around the OR gate. Now, our first theorem, let's, let's work through that here. We've got uh, x OR with 0 equals x. So let's, let's imagine this. We've got, uh, we've got one of them equals x. So we're just going to say right here is x and then b is 0. So uh, if b is always at a 0, that means uh, it will never be able to make this OR gate turn to a 1 because it's always at a 0. But a is at x, and x is a Boolean variable, which means it can be 0 or 1. And so if a changes to 0, the output is 0, but if it changes to a 1, the output is a 1. And so therefore, x is the only thing that determines the output of, of our OR gate, and so therefore we can just reduce the statement x or 0 to just x. The second one that we've got, theorem 2, is x ORed with 1 equals 1. Oops, sorry, I meant to remove this here. There we go. So we've got x ORed with 1 equals 1. So that means we've got x at this input, and we've got a constant 1 there. So that means that b is stuck at 1. So b is a 1 here, and b is a 1 here. Both of which, the output is a 1. And so that's why we can reduce this uh, x ORed with 1 is always just 1. Now, uh, x ORed with x just equals x. So let's look at um, let's look at our truth table for this one. Uh, we want to find the spots where uh, a and b are equal, because that that means that both the inputs are the same value, or really they can be represented by x. So that's this spot here and this spot here. And we see if the input is a zero, the output is a zero. If the input's a one, the output is a one. So therefore, if we have uh, x ORed with x, we can just reduce that down to x. Now this one's kind of a little bit special, so really I'm gonna, uh, I'll, I'll put it in its right spot, but it doesn't actually have an OR gate. Um, and that is x not knotted equals x. So to imagine that, just imagine that we've got a uh, signal here, x, and it's going through an inverter. So that's the first knot, and then it goes through another inverter. So really here we've got x knot, and then we invert that again. So let's put a value on it. We've got 0 here, so that flips to a 1, and then it flips back. To a zero. So we're basically undoing the inversion here. So that's uh, theorem four. And then our last one is x ORed with x not equals one. So uh, hopefully this one seems reasonably intuitive as well. Uh, since x, x not is equal to the opposite of x, that means whenever x is a 0, 
uh, x naught will be a 1, and whenever x is a 1, x naught will be a 0. So that means we're really looking at these two rows here. And we see that for both of these rows, the output is a 1. So that's kind of uh, how to make sense of these five theorems.